chale na tutuliza malaika mbingu ni wanalimba usiku na mchana wanalimba wakisem ave ave maria ni jina tuku ji na la maria ave ave maria ni jina tuku ji na la maria Maria mama wa Mungu tuombe tuombe kwa mwana o Yesu Kristo tuombe kwa mwana o Yesu Kristo jina Maria ni jina tukufu la furaisha jina tutuliza malaika mbinguni wanalimba Ose kuna mtana wana limba wakise ave ave maria ni jina tuku ji na la maria ave ave maria ni jina tuku ji na la maria Camelites they are divided in three it's a family of three, if I would say. We have the brothers ourselves. That's, those are the priests and the brothers. And then we have the sisters, nuns. And then we have the third order, Carmelites. Those lay people who are living the spirituality and the call of Carmelites. Carmelites are called to follow Christ through the charism of the Carmelite order, and that is service, fraternity, and prayer. We are all called to live together. We are called to live a life of prayer, and we are called to live a life of service. And the service that we do is a service in the model of Elijah, a service of a prophetic one. And I want to believe that's what we are doing. We are trying to go in different areas with Father Dennis, Eugene, and I, trying to empower the young people. Who are you? Trying to empower you. And to empower somebody it is to try to increase your confidence in what you are doing. My brother has talks, talked about purpose of life. You need to look forward with that confidence. And that's why we are calling it a program of empowering the young people. Get empowered. And Father has also written a book where I'm going to major. He has written several, but this time he thought it would be good that he writes a book about the young people. The cry of the young people. And my talks are going to major on that. There is, in chapter one, there's a subtopic uh, by family or disappointments in family and another one about peer pressure and I decided to elaborate on those two on what he has wrote as the holder. I would begin with the disappointments in the families. Many are times that in our families our family can make us be successful. Our families can make us climb to a very higher level in our life. It is through our family, our parents will support us in schools. It is in our family, our parents and our brothers will motivate us to do what we do in a good spirit. But again, in our families, we can get disappointments. Like where there are conflicts, then as young people, we lose morale of life. As young people, we lose even focus in our education. As young people, when families are in rangos, when families are in chaos, we tend, as young people, not to know our role in that family. But I want to tell you today, when our families are in that state whereby they are not providing the right thing for our life and for our future, it is our responsibility as young people to try by all means and bring peace and bring love 
and bring what is lacking in that family. But many are times that as young people, we think that is the work of our parents only. But in a family, we are called to hold each other hand. You, you are in a position to do good to your parents. You shouldn't only expect good from your parents only. But also you, you have a responsibility and a task to do in that family to hold it. I want to begin by saying that a family, a family is where salvation comes from. I want to believe if God did not think it wise about family, he wouldn't come in the form of Jesus to come and dwell in a family. But he did that. He came and fitted in a family, was born by Mary, the father Joseph. And then we know Jesus acting like a kid, acting like a young person like you and me in that family. And so we want to see a family being a root of salvation. And our families too, where you come from, where I come from, can be a unity that will make me enter into heaven. If I live well and I live in the respect that is required of me. As I begin also, I, I, I will read a passage in Ephesians chapter 6, verse 1 to 3. It says, children, who are you and me? It is your Christian duty to obey your parents, for this is the right thing to do. To obey your parents is the right thing to do. Respect your father and mother. It is the first commandment that has a promise added. We all know the fourth commandment. So that all may go well with you and you may live long time in this land. My brothers and sisters, we need to know our role in that family where we come from. It is a way of empowering you. It is a way of empowering myself. When I get to realize that in this family, I'm not called to live because I want to believe it's a call. That's why Kamau comes from where you come from, Naule Atoki Kuyo Familia. So you are from different families. And the family where you are born, that's where you belong. That's where God saw it's right for you to be born in that family so that you can play your role and duty in that particular family. And so, as a, as a kid, you are called, as a young people, as a young person, you are called to respect and obey your parents. That's the first stage of realizing your duty and your purpose in that family. And in that respect and in that obedience in that family, then you need to know, as I said, is family, we expect a lot from our parents, but we forget that we also need to boost them in one way or another. And as I am quoting Father Dennis, in this book, The Cry of the Young People, he will indicate well that as young people in that family, as a young person, as a young girl, young man in that family, you are expected to encourage your parents. It's our duty. But may, many times we want when we are down, our parents to come to us. Yes, it's right, and they do that. But we need to remember also from our side, we need to encourage our parents. In one way or another, it's, it's better you know it much better. If you are in school, it is a point of motivation and encouragement to your father and mother when you do well. When they tell you to do this and you do it well, it is a point of encouragement. And that's what we are saying. It is your time. You need to know that you have a duty in that family of encouraging your parents. You have a duty in that, par in that family to encourage your young brothers and your elder brothers and sisters. It is your duty. And how do you encourage them? You encourage them by just being good and doing what is right. Kuna watu wa uchokozi tu. Usikuwe mtu wa uchokozi nyumbani. There is among a family of eight kids, you may find, kuna ule mmoja tu anajulikananga, kazi yake ni kudisturb tu. Let that person not be you. Let that person be your brother or your sister, but not you. Who is here? And that's what we are saying. A point of encouragement to your parents, a point of encouragement to your brothers and sisters 
is by being good. And for instance, for a parent to get a good motivation is when and encouragement in when he sees you doing the right thing, obeying her, obeying him, and behaving well. Second duty and responsibility that we have as young people in our families so that we don't get disappointed, so that we can make that home be the Garden of Eden where there are all kinds of off-roads is when now you are also able to encourage and also challenge those within your family who are doing the wrong thing, especially your brothers and sisters. They are there. I was saying after the first point where we are called to encourage our parents through our deeds, and also encourage our brothers and sisters. The second one is to challenge them. In a family, family, family should be of people who are brothers and sisters. And again, family should be of people who can face each other in times of troubles, in times of joys, in time, and especially when somebody is going wrong. It would be very good if you as elder sister, elder brother, you stand on your ground and you tell your young ones that here you are doing wrong. Here you are not obeying our parent. Here you are not doing what you are supposed to do. It's one of them. And that is picking a role of a leader in that family. So we are called, we are called in that family so that we can make it, as I said, a garden of Eden where there are all fruits. So you can pick it at any time and enjoy that fruit. And that fruit will be the love that is in that community. That fruit will be that forgiveness that will be in that community or that family. That fruit will be that mutual living with one another, with your parents and brothers and sisters. And this will be facilitated if we will be able to challenge one another. Where one is not doing the right thing, tell the person, tell your brother and sister, here you are wrong. And where he is right then also, encourage him and congratulate him. The other thing, the third point about how we need to grow in our family, we need to visit especially our parents. I don't know, but I want to guess, if not now, in near future, you will move out of your family. Maybe you go somewhere for a job, maybe others who are here and they're in colleges, there are many students who are in Nairobi in different universities all over Kenya, but even after Likizo, they don't go home. They even go to visit their friends, but they forget their parents. What I'm saying when we talk about the family here, I would say it is your duty again to make sure time and again, no matter how committed you are, so that that family can remain you need to visit your family members and especially your parents. You will only visit them if you love them. You will only visit them if you love them and treasure them in your love. It is the high time as young people. You cultivate that today. If you live, I want to believe many of you, you live with your parents. It is good. This is the high time to establish that love between you and your parents, your mom, your dad, so that even in future, when you find yourself outside that family, maybe you are married, maybe you are working, maybe you are in school uh, in far distance, you can come back because you love them and you miss them. There are people who don't miss their parents. It's a sad thing. If you can live and you don't even remember to call your parent over the phone. It's a sad thing. But, but what we are trying to say is, Try to cultivate that today as young people. Because what we have, we grow with it. And what we acquired when we are young, it, will, it may not help us now, but it will help us at that time when we are mature enough. But because of those values that we grew up with, they will make us look back, be able to visit them and assist them. Assist them in different areas. The fourth point on how to live in our families and avoid these disappointments in the family is by being comfortable. Comfortable. Just find 
a home in your home. Find a home in your home. Kuna watu who can spend eight hours in the neighborhood na anakujanga kwa nyumba tu kulala. If not in your family, in the neighborhood. Kuna watu tu wanapenda joy when they can visit akina Mwanya, akina Kenodia, na akina Kamau. But they don't find that comfort, that peace in their own family. Begin loving your homestead. Even live about, live about even the people you are living with. Love to be at home. It is only at home where we can find security. We can find security. Kama ni kubaya kabisa kwa soko hapa, kuanza kulipuliwa magurunedi na mabomu na nini na nini, everybody here will run at home. Why? Because you love that home. And you think it's the most secure place. You have to make it secure as from today. Love that home. Be comfortable. Just sit there and feel I'm at home in our home. So that when you go somewhere else, you long to come back. There are people who don't long to go back to their, fam- to their family. Even maybe some are here. And that's why to Kimalizana 3, Evi, kuna watu wataki kwenda nyumbani, wanataki kupitia siju kwa kina nani. Love home. Some will say my dad is very, no, love him as he is. And he is that way. Sometimes we, we blame our parents by saying they are too tough on us. They are always asking me to do this. But they do all this. If you think it well, they do all that because of love. They, they don't push you. They don't ask you to come at six because they don't love you. They ask you to come early at home because they, they want you safe. They ask you not to be in this relationship because they want you safe. And that's why if you realize that, you will love home and that home will be a comfortable place for you. And that's what I'm requesting you. Make it your home, make it comfortable for you and live it safely. The other thing is that uh, for us to live well and avoid this disappointment as the fifth point, is seeking for help when you are in problems. Seek help and begin from your parent, your mother, your dad, your guardian, the person who is in the place of your parents at that particular time. Ask, ask for help. I would say many young people, and we are here to empower you. We are here to empower you to speak out what you think that has been happening into your life and it is not right. I speak this with confidence. That there are many young people who have been abused, but they don't say it out. Why? Because they don't ask for help. Or they fear. They have what brother said, that fear in them that chokes and kills the confidence. You need to have that courage of going ahead don't be misused and abused and then you keep quiet. Speak it out. And this, after speaking it out, you will get help. From the person who you are telling, who you think he can help you. But again, when I say trust people and seek for uh, advices, don't trust everyone. There are people that you can trust and then they miss you the more. Be prudent enough see the right person. I don't know who that right person is, but I know you can guess a right person. And then seek for that advice, seek for that help, and you will heal yourself. You will get helped. And again, problems shared is half solved. As long as you share it out, in a way, you are healing yourself. Don't die when you are young because of stress. Don't get others because of stress. Why? Because of stomaching everything inside you. Speak it out, get help, and live well in that family. So what I'm saying is that in a family, you need to know who to ask. It can be your elder brother. It can be your elder sister. It can be your mother. It can be your dad. It can be your uncle, auntie, or run to church. We meet priests there. You meet those who can help you. Speak out your issue, get help, get healed, and live well. 
We all want, and that's why we are moving around, we all wish that all young people could have a good life in 10 years to come, 20 years to come. We just want to wish you a good future. And that's why you are seated there, that's why we are speaking here. We want you to have a good future. And according to Father Dennis, I think he thought it could be well that future to be built from that family where you come from. That family can make you come out as a guy, as a girl who has dignity and values to propel him or her to venture in life in a successful manner. So my brothers and sisters, please, when you are in problems, share your problem. And it is through sharing then you will get the help that you need and empowerment for you to venture on with life. The sixth point, in a way, how to avoid and deal with disappointments in our family is being there for one another. Be there for one another. In the family, you may find that people are not relating well. Why? because they just live together. There are two aspects of people who are living together, either in a family, in communities, in any setup that people have been gathered together. They may either, and this goes to individuals, they may either love each other, which is the positive part of it. Because of living together, people love each other. People treasure each other. People care for each other. But again, there's the negative part of it. When people live together, they can hate each other. When people live together, they hurt each other. When people live together, there are things that will come across and make us divide. But if we are Christians, we know when those crises come, there's an option of forgiveness. Forgive your brother when he wrongs you. Forgive your sister when he wrongs you. And then... Try to live together. My sixth point is saying that just be there for the other person in the family. And being there calls for that helping one another. Being there calls for that forgiveness. Being there calls for you to be ample. Be, just be down. Just be down. So that people can approach you. You know, when you are, when you are arrogant, nobody will ever approach you. They just know, uyu ni kia ni muendea, ata nitusi. Ni ki muendea, ata nituanisha tuna maneno. But when you are down to earth, many will come to you, and you yourself, you will be able to help them. My brothers and sisters, let us gang together. Not as youth waapa, kingongo parish, but I would call you, gang together as family members. And family, we have the nuclear family, you your brothers and sisters, and dad and mom. We have also the extended family. Show respect to your uncles and auntie, na wale wengine, na makuzo. Be there for them. That is the family. That is the family. And if we live in that harmony and peace, as people who have the same blood, we will move again from our homes to our jumuyas, small Christian communities. As people who are in love, as people who have grown together, we be good Christians. We move from our small Christian communities. We come together again with the same love and the same unity that we are getting it from our family to the church. And then the paradise comes here on earth. The paradise comes here on earth because we are in love, because we are living well. As a young person, you know, I have a duty to encourage my parents. I have a duty to visit them. I have a duty to care for them. Even our grandmom and grandpa, they are all over. They are all over. Let us embrace family and all that is needed to be done in that family. You get to know your role as a young person. If you know you are expected of you to cook, just cook. Don't complain. Young guys, my brothers here who are here, you know your duties in the family. Just do. And where you can help your sister, help. Where your sister can help you, let her help you. And that is the joy of living in a family. Family is a paradise. And it is a paradise 
made by you and me. Make that family where you come from a paradise. And you can change it. If there are angles, conflict, and everything, you can change it alone by preaching the gospel and the right thing. And that gospel is what we are saying today. That gospel is what we are saying today. Do that which is expected. Correct your brother. Visit your parents. Encourage them. And challenge one another in that family. I will also talk about peer pressure. Peer pressure. We, 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 lack, we lack to ground ourselves well in our family because we have influences by our peers, our friends, from school, kutoka kwa kijiji, and our neighbors. Our peer, we find comfort, and that's why I mentioned that there are people who don't find comfort in their home. They find comfort in the neighborhood. Why? Because they have a friend there. And so, peer pressure, in, to some extent, is killing our future. And that's what we are talking about you. We are talking to you about future because we all want you to be successful. We want you, all of you, to be successful. All. We wish everybody could embrace a career, a vocation, and live a happy life few years to come. And that's why we are saying when we are, we are all in this, maybe more or less, we are teens. And between 13 and 19, 20, that's the time that you find friends who will mislead you. That's the time that you will find friends who will make you achieve your goals. So it is the high time for us now as young people at this stage to get that into our minds. That we struggle to identify well with our family because of bad company. And that's why we have conflict with our parents. And they will always say, my father nakwanga tough sana. My mother is always quarreling me. Why? Because I'm going to watch our fight. And he or she can see your future is not ending well. And that's why your parent will always be on you. You don't identify yourself well with the family due to the peer pressure. Instead of identifying ourselves with our family and our home, we identify ourselves with our friends, with our peers. And that's why we mess it up all. And this puts ourselves in problems with our parents. And there's one of your sister, one of your brother, who your mother or your dad is not too much on him or her. No, you have a problem yourself. Don't say that your parents hate you. They don't. They even love you more than that other person. They want good out of you. And so let us realize it's out of love. And if they're quarreling, they want good out of us. Do the right thing. Do the right thing. We need to choose. We need to choose. When it comes to peer pressure, we need to choose between the positive part and negative. There's a peer pressure that is positive. There are friends that are good. Keep them. There are friends that are good. Friends that will help you in your things, in what you're doing. Friends who will challenge you. Friends who will journey with you towards your goals and towards your dreams. For instance, we are talking to you who our majority are in school. I'm repeating what also my brother said. Majority of you are students. Majority of you are students. If you have friends that you discuss about school issues, especially this time of corona, everything is down. Mutua class two, mutua ata masomo sujali achawapi. But if you gang together with your friends to revise, to challenge each other about education, those are, that's a positive peer pressure. Those are good people. They want you to pass in your exams. They want you to pass in your life in general. And so those are people to keep. Good friends. Good friends. They are good. They build you. They challenge you. They make you move to the next level because you move with them. They are of the same age with you. 
they have the same dreams with you, they have the same vision with you, so you can journey together towards a good future. But, my brothers and sisters, there's the negative peer pressure, which is killing us, which is, which is uh, kind of even cutting our life short. Because if you engage with people who are drug addict, definitely, today you are not. Tomorrow you will also become a drug addict. And your life, in a way, to be short. If you are a man or a girl who will always look for Niwapi kuna sherehe, twende, sherehe za usiku. You, and those are the friends who will give you even courage. Watu wengine ni waoga sana. But because of your peer pressure, they tell you, no, we will go and come. Before even they wake up at five, we are back. They are encouraging you. But that's a negative peer pressure. We need to know. Once you know, then you know how to deal with it. Once you know, then you know how to deal with it. Let us know that there's the negative part and the positive part when it comes to peer pressure. My advice to you, check and see. Do a selection and say, this one and this one, they don't fit, or I don't fit into their group. Move, join the right group. Join the right group. And a group can be of two. And a group of two, the better you can challenge each other and move on well. We need to understand that when we are choosing this peer pressure, we need to choose it on a certain line of morals. We need to check well and see the group that I am in. How is my brother and my sister? In that, in that, in that friendship, how are their moves? Because if you are friends, you know me. If we are friends, I know you. And if I know you, I know your moves. Even if you have not told me to journey with you in what you do, I already know. Once you know, challenge that person. Challenge that. If he's on a negative part, challenge that person. And if he's not ready to change, I always say, and I said this somewhere else, change it yourself. If you challenge somebody to change and he cannot change, you change. Avoid that group. Avoid that person and move on with the right person. Move on with the right person. And this, you can only gauge this well on moral issues. There are people who are immoral too, by their talk, by their doings, by even their breath. In a sense to flee. Avoid them. Those who think that they can pull you through their behavior, through what they do, to the good part, join them. And in any group you are joining of peer pressure, make sure, make sure you are there to help them. They may help you at the end of it all. But ask yourself, in this group that I am, because I know you know your friends, how am I helping my brothers and sisters that I am with, that I always go to their home? Do, they, do I go there just to watch TV? Do I go there to tell them when they are wrong, that they are wrong? Let's be a contributor in where you are. Contribute something. Contribute something. And contribute it on the positive part. Don't go there on the negative or to pull them to do what is not right. Go there to pull them to do what is right. And when we do that, that's our call as Christians. We are all called to preach the good news. And this good news, we are to preach it by word and by deeds. By you doing good things, you may pull somebody else. If people do good because of your words, because of your actions, then you are preaching the good news and you are doing the right thing. Let us avoid bad company in simple terms. Let us know that we have a responsibility and that responsibility, even not of just doing what is right. But I want to go back and say that even choosing the right company, the right people, the right friends, that choosing itself is a responsibility. We have a responsibility 
of choosing the right group to journey with in life. Let you take that responsibility of selecting your friends. Let it be your duty. Do it right and you will prosper in life. I have outlined a few things on how to manage peer pressure. How to manage peer pressure so that when you are in a group, because you can choose a good group, but with the time, they turn to be bad people. How are you going to manage that peer, peer group? or that peer pressure that you are in or that you are about to enter. One, knowing where you stand. Know your stance. Be firm. Be firm in certain issues. When you say no to a particular thing, let it not change to be yes. Let it remain to be no. What you say to be yes, let it remain. Be firm in your decision makings. So what I'm saying is that in any decision that you make, be firm in that peer pressure. If you decide that we are here and we will never go for an outing of drinking the overnight as friends, let it never come during your lifespan. Let it never come. Remain to do what you agreed and what you think is right for the rest of your life. So what I'm saying is that uh, be firm in your decision makings. In the midst of your friends, in the, as an individual, be firm. Know what is right, choose what is right, do what is right, be firm with that which is right. Saying, second point, communicate. If this is what I've decided as Daniel, then I should let my colleagues, my friends, my friends get to know what I have decided. So I communicate it out. That I've decided that Mimi, yo pati munasema twende, na kuna keroro, siendi, my brothers. I'm not going evil to. Why I'm not going? Tena iko sangapi, from nine to curfew time. I'm not going. Unasema tu evil. Be firm, then second, communicate to your friends. This one, no. Because I don't think it is the right thing for us to do. So you communicate your decision to your brothers and sisters, to your friends. Let them know what you think. Let them know what you have decided. And by knowing, they will respect you. And they may either go, and when they go, they may think we were told. This is not the right thing. And if kama kuna unajua kuna mapati mnaenda na zinakuwa zina backfire. Unasikia this happened, this happened, huyu alirudi hata akapigwa na mzazi. Then they will be able to remember your words. Why? Because of your stand. They will remember our friends are litwambia this is not right. And in a one way or another you are doing the right thing and you are preaching the good news. That point on how to manage the peer pressure, show confidence in what you have decided. No confidence. Confidence too. I mean, I'm not saying this, maybe in itaenda, maybe it's itaenda. No. Show confidence that this is what I'm doing. Another thing on how to manage the peer pressure is to ask yourself, in that group that you are in, of two guys, of two girls, of three men and three girls, ask yourself, with my friends and what we have been doing, am I happy and contented? Am I happy to, to be with them? And in this happiness, you can only judge happiness, one, by judging also if it is right. Because there are many things that can excite you and make you happy, but they're not right. So when you, when you are judging your happiness in that group, you should judge happiness on the basis of the truth. Judge the happiness and the contentment in that group by seeing what is right, what is true. What is true? And is this happiness going to last? Because kuna happiness in Guinea which are very short-lived. Kuna happiness that two minutes, yeah, cut, I'm Asia. 
Happiness image. Ni kama, ni kama moto, moto ya nyasi. Tukiaisha moto ya nyasi hapa itamaliza, itamaliza one minute. Lakini imewaka kuwaka. Batu kuna kama moto kadogo tu. Kakuni ingine kubwa hivi. Kata waka mbaka hata kesho jioni. So that's what you should look at. The happiness that I'm enjoying in with my group. With my peer pressure. Is it the happiness that is going to last? Or is it short lived? Is it short lived? So judge it and say I continue with them. Or judge it and say, I will not continue with them. Because what I've discovered, we go, we come back full of tears. Instead of going and coming back with full of joy. Say we go, we come back with tears. So I abandon this group. I'm not going to be with them anymore. And let your decision be firm and be confident. So judge it on the basis of truth and do it. The other thing is, uh, as the fifth point, is asking yourself, and this may tie with the fourth one, asking yourself, what we always do, is it the right thing? That's a good group. You see, we did that, and it was very good. There's another day also, we went to the church, and tukapata, kuna makaratasi huko, na tukafagi ama tukawakota, as friends, and we were just coming to pray. So, you see, this is a good group. Then let me retain. So judge it and ask yourself, have we been doing the right thing? In matters of charity? In matters of respecting our parents? In matters of living as youth and good youth members in the church? Just ask yourself. The sixth and the last point in this is that be with the people who propel you to achieve your dreams and your goals. Be with the people who will propel you through their words, through what they do, through their behavior. Those who, when, who will make you achieve your dreams. And when we say your dreams, we say your future. When we talk about your dreams, we talk about your future. When we talk about dreams, we talk about your life purpose. What my brother has spent all his time here talking about. Your purpose of life. My brother Eugene. Purpose of life. That commitment to a cause. That commitment to a cause. Let, it, let the people who are near you also propel you that purpose of your life in this world. After all this, to build yourself well in a family, to build yourself well with your friends, that's a peer pressure, to build your future well, my brothers and sisters, allow me to say you need God with you. You need God by all means. Alpha and Omega, begin with God, finish with God. And this calls for being in line and being connected with God. One way of showing that you're connected with God, particularly today, you come into church because you had Father Dennis is coming with other brothers to speak to you. For me, it's a good sign. You came because you are connected with God. I want to believe and I trust that. If that is true, let us cultivate that and keep it in us that we need to stay connected with God. For us to do well in our family, for, la for us to do well with our peer pressure, our, our friends, for us to do well for our future, let us be connected with God. And one way of being connected with God is being people, young people who can pray. I talk about prayer. Be a person who remembers who God is. Be a person who recognizes that my family is blessed. I am blessed. Our church is blessed. Our location is blessed. Our is blessed by God. Never say that even after doing very well in school, that it's your own energy. Recognize that God has helped you in one way. Say God has made me have this. If you keep that in your mind, you will remember to pray. Keep a word of prayer. Prayer leads us to an experience with God. And if we have an experience with God, encounter with God, 
we are not left empty. We are, we are left filled with happiness and joy in our hearts. When you have an experience, an encounter with God, one day, one minute, one second, you are not the same. I say this with confidence because it is true. What is God? It is true. And so when, when, when we pray, then we have that encounter, we have that experience with God. People who pray, we have talked about decision, being firm, what decision and decision. People who pray, people who are connected with God through prayer, they make good decisions. If you are a person who can say, I want to do this, but before I do it, I call upon God. I call upon God. In my simple, in my simple broken prayer, you will make, at the end of it all, you make a good decision. I urge you, my brothers and sisters, let us be connected with God through prayer. Let us be connected with God through prayer. And prayer helps us to be intimate, to be in friendship with God. To be in friendship with God. So that even when I'm walking and I find myself alone, I can even say our Father on my way. There's no harm. There's good. I mean, you can pray at any time, at any place. I urge you, cultivate that spirit of prayer. And it is in prayer that we don't know how to pray. Paul will tell you that in Romans, that we don't know how to pray. But when we are in that mood, the Holy Spirit helps us to pray. So Holy Spirit will help you to pray. Even when you don't have any intention to pray for, just be in front of God. And that is enough. God knows you. God will reward you. God will answer your prayers. So what I'm saying is that let us cultivate a, a, a spirit of prayer as young people. That prayer will make us move well in our family. That prayer will make us move well and that connectedness with God will make us move well with our friends. That prayer will make us focus in what we are doing and what we are committed today about our life purpose. And then future will just come pop, full of successes, full of happiness, full of all that you can mention. That is good. God is good and all the time. So thank you. Thank you very much for listening. And we hope and pray that our wish of empowering you, of increasing confidence in you, in your life, it will be true. And in future, we will meet with successful people. Thank you and be blessed. Asante. Awesome